message is brought to you by ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. In line with the third aspect of its mandate, which is to educate the public on and against bribery, corruption and related offenses, and to enlist and foster public support in combating corruption, ICPC has deployed several initiatives to carry out this duty. One of such initiatives is the National Anti-Corruption Volunteer Corps, NAVC. Today, we shall focus on how the NAVC has fared since its inception. Welcome to Corruption Must Go, ICPC's weekly television program. My name is Murna Barnabas Atiai. Also on our menu today, we have ethics and values, drama, and many more. But first, Ruth Awadi is standing by with stories on anti-corruption. The chain of corruption now. Don't give, don't take. This message is brought to you by ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Welcome to this segment on anti-corruption stories. I am Ruth Awudi. ICPC has called on all public servants to be above board in all their dealings and become gallant foot soldiers in the fight against corruption. The acting chairman, Dr. Musa Usman Abubakar, who was represented by the head of administration, ICPC, Mr. G. N. Baku, made the call during the commission celebrations marking the Africa Public Service Day, which is in line with the declaration of 2018 as African Year Against Corruption by the heads of states and governments of the African Union. Dr. Abubakar also reiterated ICPC's resolve to fight corruption and reduce it to the barest minimum. We, in the ICPC, assure Mr. President of our commitment in our effort to strengthen public institutions through one of our mandates, which is the systems study and review of corruption-prone procedures in ministries departments and agencies. This event was actually supposed to be a larger event involving a public lecture and so on. But the notice came so short that we thought that we couldn't get enough time to give to the people who are to prepare lectures and deliver here and so on. So we turned it into this work. I can assure you that if next year the Head of service is gracious enough to allow us to host it. It's going to be a more, effect, a, more, a more celebrated event than what we have had today. I wish to thank all of you that are here as stakeholders in the fight against corruption for attending this celebration. The fight against corruption in modern times is not a fight by one single or two agencies. It's everybody's fight. In her goodwill message, the head of civil service, Mrs. Winifred Oyo Ita, who was represented by the director special duties, Mr. James Olusoji, 
commended ICPC for its efforts in the fight against corruption in Nigeria, especially to rid the nation's public service of corruption. It is very important to recognize the good work the ICPC had been doing and still doing to rid the public service as well as the entire nation of corruption. I must confess that your efforts have really led their fools and have brought about turnaround in both the private and the public mindsets. The Secretary of the Anti-Corruption and Transparency Unit, ACTU of the Public Complaints Commission, Mr. Adejo Sule Friday, who represented the Commissioner of the Agency, Honorable Chile Igbawa, spoke about his institution's readiness to partner with ICPC. ICPC and other agencies, anti-graft agencies, to see Public Complaints Commission as their will, their leg, to take us to our destination. A will in the sense that Public Complaints Commission have a widespread structure. We have offices in all the 30 city states and then in all the local governments. And with this, we can take anti-corruption campaign to the grassroots and to every Nigerian. The theme for this year's celebration is combating corruption in public service institutions through stakeholder participation and promotion of ethical leadership to realize the objectives of Agenda 2063 and the Sustainable Development Goals. Highlights of the event included a road walk from the old parade ground through Area 1 to the ICPC headquarters where goodwill messages were delivered. ICPC has charged civil society organizations to redouble their efforts in the fight against corruption. The Commissioner of Education, Mr. Baba Ashiru, gave the charge when he welcomed Locksterra Leadership Foundation, a multiple resource outfit which enlists religious leaders in the campaign against corruption on behalf of the acting chairman of ICPC, Dr. Musa Usman Abubakar, to the commission recently. Mr. Ashiru commended the leaders of the organization for focusing on religious leaders as they stand a better chance of instilling good values and morals in the society. He informed the visitors that religious leaders were key to the anti-corruption crusade. Well, we receive your request for audience. We were very happy because religious leaders uh, form as well a platform of engagement in ICPC. We've been operating this platform the past seven years. We've been interacting with religious leaders across Nigeria, both Muslims and Christians. We've been holding conferences, seminars for them. It's a beauty in answer to my brother's question. The Reports of such engagements with religious leaders was omitted in this in the presentation there. But the truth is that we've been interacting with leaders of religion. As a matter of fact, 
we don't like a certain taste of the country. What of the expectations? That interfere with leaders of the region having a major platform of the Commission. Most often, we organize on our own. We've had a series of interruptions even here in the auditorium. And some other time, we go out to the states to mobilize them and interact with them. The basic teaching there is always, please reject the obvious by these granted elements who want to you who want to use you for their selfish aims because you command respect. You command respect from amongst almost more than ninety percent of the population of Nigeria, as my brother said, it is true. That's why we consider the religious institution as a very good tool in the fight against corruption. Earlier, while speaking at the occasion, the Foundation's Project Coordinator, Barrister Mike Utsaha, who represented the Executive Director, Reverend Father George Ehusani, lamented the seeming neglect of religious institutions in the anti-corruption fight. That will be all on this segment. Corruption Must Go continues. Stay with us. If you're just tuning in, this is Corruption Must Go. The NAVC was initiated in 2008 by the Commission to provide a platform for ordinary Nigerian citizen volunteers to get involved personally and actively in the anti-corruption fight. After its inception, the core was inaugurated in most states of the Federation with each chapter headed by a coordinator. All state chapters were under the supervision of a national coordinator at the ICPC headquarters. As NAVZ gained popularity across the country, some volunteers deviated completely from the principles of the core through various forms of abuses. In view of these excesses and abuses, the commission in 2014 ordered the suspension of the activities of the core nationwide in order to restore its ideals and noble objectives as well as maintain the commission's integrity the national coordinator speaks on some of these abuses The NAVC stands for National Anti-Corruption Volunteer Corps. It was established in 2008. The main purpose of establishing the NAVC is to involve Nigerians, ordinary Nigerians, educated Nigerians, private people into the fight against corruption. You know, the ICPC has been making efforts to involve all segments of the Nigerian society in the fight against corruption. We have the anti-corruption and transparency monitoring units in ministries, departments and agencies for civil servants and public servants. We have the anti-corruption clubs in secondary schools and primary schools for students. We also have the anti-corruption vanguards in tertiary institutions. Now the NAVC completes the cycle of including all segments of the society in the fight against corruption. The idea is to involve private citizens who may not be civil servants, who may not be students, so that they can contribute their own quota. The belief here is that the anti-corruption fight has to be spearheaded by the citizens themselves. It is not a top to bottom kind of uh, uh, thing. It is bottom-up operation and this is how anti-corruption agencies have been operating in most countries of the world. In Hong Kong, for example, it was actually the people themselves who were disgusted by the corruption in the society that marched to the government house and demanded for an anti-corruption commission to be established. 
and the Anti-Corruption Commission of Hong Kong today is one of the most vibrant, the most successful I've ever known. Yes, um, NAVC is mandated. If you look at the operational guidelines, you will have an idea what we have set out to do before we were operating without any guidelines. But now we have guidelines. Number one, they are to be the eyes and the ears of the ICPC in all local governments, all states of the federation of the country. They are to engage in mobilization of the people, of the public, by organizing rallies, sensitization workshops, to educate people on the ills of corruption and to mobilize them. Uh, they are also, most importantly, to report instances of corrupt practices to the ICPC. They are not to investigate. They are not to carry out any preliminary uh, investigation. As so they are on is to provide information because it is only the ICPC that is empowered by law to investigate and to prosecute. So they are to report cases of corruption to the commission, they are to mobilize the people, they are to engage in public enlightenment, they are to engage in uh, rallies, mobilization. They are also to observe the level of integrity in the society, among other things. In 2014, the commission was forced to suspend activities of the NAVC nationwide. Why? Because uh, the ideas, the goals of the core were being truncated. Unfortunately, some of the members went out of their way to prevent, to, to, to carry out what they were supposed to prevent. In some cases, some of the state coordinators were arresting people, interrogating people, even extorting money. In fact, the commission had uh, occasion to take one or two of the coordinators to court for going against. That is why in 2015, when uh, it was rebranded, we had to produce some literature. Number one, we established the operational guidelines showing the way forward, how to recruit the eligibility for recruitment. Before you are recruited, you must be gainfully employed, you must be 25 years old, you must have an uh, international passport or any verifiable, um, uh, any verifi verifiable uh, method of uh, identification. Then you must be sponsored by two senior public servants or law enforcement officers, I mean. So that means you must have two referees that are well known in the society. Now, apart from the operational guidelines, we also have uh, understanding the nature of corruption because we need to educate them on what they are supposed to be doing. We also have another one here, counseling orders on what to do. This also on corruption. Then we have public enlightenment and education uh, strategies. This is to help them, to give them an idea of how to mobilize people. Then we have guidelines for community advocacy. These booklets are meant to help members to be well prepared for the job of mobilizing people against corruption and for the job of being members of the National Anti-Corruption Volunteer Corps. And the thing is that uh, since it was rebranded in 2015, we have been able to inaugurate only eight state chapters that is in Abia, Delta, Rivers, Imo, Oyo, Ogun, Ekiti. So we intend to carry on with the inauguration of other state chapters. So far, the states that we have inaugurated, things are moving very smoothly. Although I must say that um, with enough funds, we should have been able to inaugurate many more states by now but we are making efforts uh, as long as we get enough funds we'll continue to do the inauguration but those chapters we have inaugurated we have eliminated all sorts of uh, problems any conflicts we have eliminated them and they are working in harmony with us and we are monitoring their progress 
even last week and last Saturday in um, Oshimili, local government in Delta is the Oshimili North. Uh, the local government chapter was launched there last only last Saturday. So things are moving very well. We are working in harmony with the police, with the Department of State Services, and with other security agencies. So what checks has the commission put in place to guide the activities of the core? Yeah, that's why I was telling you about the operational guidelines. The operational guidelines actually contain the do's and the don'ts for all the members. You know, before it was like an all comma kind of affair. Anybody could just enlist. But now, before you enlist, you must have to be vetted. You must have to provide referees either from the public civil servant or a senior law enforcement officer. So from the enlistment, from the eligibility, we now monitor every single person so that whatever you do, we can trace you easily. You know, we can trace you, we have uh, referees, and then we have your address and we know where you're working, we have your telephone number. So we can easily trace you and we can easily uh, monitor you. Uh, I think uh, the best thing we can do here is to liaise with the ICPC zonal office, do whatever they ask us to do. The area they want us to help them, we will do that. We will, we will not initiate any program of our own and do it our own way. Rather, we are going to depend on them. Whatever they ask us to do, that's what we will do. Okay, this is a volunteer uh, business. I'm not going to be paid anything. What motivates you into taking up this very difficult task, despite the fact that you are not going to be paid? Well, you see that um, most of the people that volunteered into this call have the passion to fight corruption. Most people are not happy. That's why we say that Nigeria is corrupt. Really, Nigeria is corrupt. But there are people that are not corrupt. People who are ready to offer anything to make sure that the corruption is fought to the, uh, to the minimal level. So I believe that we are not, most of the people we see here are not here for money. They want to give their own quota to the country so that our country will be better. So, ah. now, straight to business. No. Now, that case between State versus Femi Wally. Femi Wally? Yes. Is he your son? <laughs> That's my hair, yeah, parents. Did he actually <laughs> kill the wife? His juvenile delinquency, they must have taken some food oh, bottles. Oh. A man of 40. Juvenile delinquent? Now, what do we do? I don't want him to go to jail. We are very good friends. But for this, I cannot help you. You know I was so nice to you in school. I took care of you. I'll politely leave. No, you can't leave. How much do you want me to pay? Wale, this is not about money. It's about the law. Bribing a judge to subvert the cause of justice is corruption. Not in my country. Stop corruption now. Corruption not in my country. Though there are no materials or financial benefits attached to the duties of the members of the Corps, 
but Nigeria can improve its economy, strengthen its institutions, increase the quality in services, reduce inequality gap and improve the welfare of the people if citizens take a stance against corruption. That's our package on this week's edition. Remember, you can make inquiries and suggestions via our toll-free numbers as shown on the screen. You can also watch the program on our YouTube channel www.youtube.com forward slash ICPC Nigeria. Thank you for watching. I am Murna Barnabas Atiaye.